conference. Bulldogs now five and four on the season and travel to Furman uh, this Saturday in SOCOM play for a two o'clock kickoff up in Greenville. Uh, our two cadet athletes with us today are quarterback Dom Allen and defensive tackle Jonathan King. And at this time, I'll ask head coach Brent Thompson to come up, make an opening statement, and then take questions. Thanks, Zeke. Thanks for coming out. Um, Saturday, I, I thought uh, it was kind of a, a little bit of a microcosm about how our season has gone. Is uh, you see flashes of greatness on both sides of the ball, and then all of a sudden you see some of the uh, things that we don't want to see, and some things that aren't really formulas for success for us. And uh, we had uh, red zone turnovers again, and uh, the red zone turnovers got us. And that's what happens when uh, you, you can play your game plan all the way out to the point where you turn the ball over. I thought we did a good job of uh, time possession was, was in our favor. Uh, we let up a couple big plays on defense. And unfortunately, uh, that's, a, that's a good offense. That's a, an offense that averages about 35 points a game. Uh, very, very quick strike. They've got three tremendous players. Uh, and then they did a good job on defense of forcing us into uh, uh, you know, three or four red zone turnovers that got us. Uh, if we convert those to points, I think it's a much different ball game. Uh, I think the thing that's most disappointing for me is that the recipe, um, the formula for success is there. It's just we're not executing it uh, at 100% right now. We've got to figure out what those answers are. Um, sometimes you know what the answers are. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, but there's nothing that we're going to do to change what we do offensively or defensively. We've got to continue to do it and do it better. Um, I don't think it's a personnel thing. I don't think it's a, um, an execution thing. I think it's just one of those things we've got to start to uh, just do a better job of taking care of, uh, of the football and not letting up big plays on, uh, on the defensive side. Uh, all but about four or five plays uh, defensively, we played extremely well. Highlight of the day, obviously, was the special teams. We had uh, three block kicks. And with three block kicks, you should end up with more than 19 points. Uh, moving forward to this week is a very good Furman team. It's a team a lot like us right now. They are um, doing a good job of running the football, doing a good job of stopping the run. They're uh, one or two in the conference of uh, stopping the run between us and them. And uh, they do a good job of uh, maintaining possession of the ball. They don't hurt themselves. They take care of the ball, and they methodically move it down the field. Uh, we've got to be aggressive. We've got to be able to uh, control them. And uh, we've got to just keep it simple for our guys. They're coming off a bye week, so uh, they'll be fresh and ready to go with a, uh, you know, with a little bit of a rivalry between the two schools. Uh, Update-wise, injury-wise, we've got most of our guys healthy. Josh LeBlanc did not play last week. Um, we're going to see about this week. I don't know if he'll be able to come back this week. Uh, Kali Williams, he, we tried him out last week, had a few plays. Uh, once again, we're going to see if we can get him back for this week at a, a little bit longer. Unfortunately, he played only about five or six plays last week. Uh, other than that, I think everybody else should be back ready to go uh, by, this, uh, by this Saturday. Once again, I, I think we did a good job running the football. We're two in the country, uh, rushing the ball, which is where we want to be between in the top five someplace. Uh, it's just uh, when it comes down to the points, that's what we need to start to convert, uh, rushing yards into points. Furman's good on defense. They, uh, they've got a good scheme. They know what they're doing. Of course, Coach Stagg's coming over from Charleston Southern. He's seen us quite a bit. We've seen him quite a bit. Uh, we've got our, our work cut out for us. We've just got to be able to uh, move the ball down the field methodically and just take care of it just as they're going to do. It should be a fairly quick game. Defensively, once again, they're going to try to probably open the gaps, run the ball. They've got a good, uh, good running back, and I think the quarterback does a good job of uh, throwing the ball around. Blaze Jowski's been there for four years now. I believe this is his fourth year, three years of a starter. And uh, he's athletic on his feet, and he can make all the throws, and he's got a couple of good wide receivers to throw to. Questions? Uh, they focus a little bit more. I think they're good up front. They do a good job on the offensive line. They pry open gaps pretty good. I think they're fundamentally sound. He works extremely hard at that. Uh, and I love the way that the B-backs play. They've got two really good fullbacks. Uh, they don't hurt themselves. They don't put themselves in any, uh, any tough situations. They're very similar to us at this point and very similar to a Wofford at this point. Uh, a little bit of shotgun veer, just enough to keep you honest. They uh, do a good job in the play action game. That's where they're deep passes usually come from. Uh, and then they settle you down with the B-back on the inside. Defensively, they commit a lot of guys to the run. They do a good job on the run game. And uh, Coach Stax has always done a good job against the run. So uh, they've got a very similar formula to success, and it's working out for them. Would you call it an Air Force style option, or who would you 
Very similar to Air Force is we've watched a lot of Air Force film with just our own professional development. Is uh, I don't know that he's got the complete Air Force game plan because that kind of builds over time. Uh, I think he's installed uh, probably about 60, 75 percent of it with a little bit of what uh, the offensive coordinators mixed in. How much? I mean, this has obviously plagued the team all year. But how much do you try to replicate or harp on the turnovers and try to create game situations like that? Uh, and Practice. Over the last couple of weeks, we've gone against our own defense to try to replicate it. We've gone against our own defense in the red zone to try to replicate it. It's still very, very difficult. As you're worried about injuries, you're worried about injuries this late in the year, and uh, it's not that you don't, you know, it's not that you don't work ball security because we work ball security for five minutes every single day on the offensive side. Uh, but it's still very, very difficult. You know, um, the one to Cam, I thought that was the one that that, that kind of hurt us. It really hurt us a lot. And, uh, you know, that one's one of those things where you just got to focus through all the way throughout. Sometimes you don't see that. Um, the, I guess the irony of it, it happened to us two years ago at Western with Isaiah Smith. He busts a run all the way out to the one-yard line and got poked out at the one-yard line. So uh, it's haunted us. Uh, we've got to be better at it. There's no doubt about it. And then when it comes to just throwing the ball in the red zone, we just got to take a little bit better care of it, you know, better decisions with it, live to play another down. And it comes down to probably just trying to force plays in there. When you're coming off. When you're coming off back-to-back um, -back SoCon championships, playoff berth is not out there. You might think this week there's a little lack of motivation, but it's firm, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, how, how does the team address that? Well, I, I addressed it with the team head-on on Sunday, and that was this is uh, we've got a senior class here. We've got a senior class here that uh, deserves. Uh, they deserve a winning year. They've played their butts off for four years here and five years here. They've worked to get this program where it's at. Uh, we need to step up, and we need to step up and make sure that we get a winning year, and that's, uh, that starts with this weekend's game as, as well as being a firm in game. Uh, so both those things together, I think, uh, still have, we still have a lot of motion, motivation to play for. And uh, as I said, I think it was last week, is uh, uh, winning seasons, three consecutive winning seasons, is a lot to play for around here. And uh, it just would help us continue and really propel us into next year. I think it's extremely important, no matter what. Is uh, winning seasons are they're always hard to come by. Uh, even if you're having a down year, you could still have a winning year, and it's just not quite what it was. Uh, and it didn't work out the way it was. It still can propel you into the, the off season, which is what we're looking for. Brent, what changes in the red zone uh, compared to between the 20s? Uh, the field gets shorter. It gets smaller. They, 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 uh, the safeties get that much closer. You're going from 10-yard safeties defending the field to 5- and 6-yard safeties defending the field. Uh, the counter game becomes a little bit more. The, the play action game becomes a little bit more. Uh, you've got to be able to dig out linebackers that are, instead of being four and five yards off the ball, they're two and three yards off the ball. Uh, so you've got to be uh, tighter in your ball game. You've got to be tighter in your alignments. You've got to be uh, tighter with all your gaps as well. And um, you know that's something that we worked extremely hard on last week, and we were just trying to pound the ball in. And then when it came to the point where they were just supporting too many guys, we were able to, to throw the touchdown pass to Keontae. Uh, and then when you get down there a couple more times, you got to try to you know throw the ball in the end zone. Uh, I think what happened to us the first possession, you know, we turned the ball over on the 20-yard line. Uh, that was right around the red zone there, and then uh, uh, the interceptions on the goal line there. The last interception on the goal line, we were, we were just trying to conserve clock and take shots into the end zone. Uh, so you don't want to use timeouts there. You mentioned Cam play the goal line. Are you satisfied that they got that call right? Yeah, I looked at it. I, you know, unfortunately, the one good uh, camera shot that we had in the instant replay, the only one that ever got turned over in Johnson Haygood this year was that one. Uh, everything else kind of was sustained, uh, and that's because I thought we had a good camera angle on it right at the goal line, and that was uh, – I saw the uh, what ended up being still photos of it is – it's all a matter of when they thought he lost possession of it. And uh, you can't really tell from the still photos, but you could see the ball's a little bit loose in there. So there was enough there to be able to overturn it, I thought. Brent, what about the idea of there being replay only in some stages? Are you still OK with that? Yeah, it's a little bit frustrating, I guess. But you know, in any other stadium, aside from Mercer, that would have been a touchdown. Uh, but you know, I don't get caught up in it. I can't get caught up in the ifs and the buts of it. I would like for everybody to be there. But uh, the reality of it is, is everybody's in a different situation in their stadium. It's FCS football. We're in the Southern Conference. Uh, we've got some stadiums that are equipped for it and some that aren't. Uh, we're just happy that we do have one. one more Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Uh, defense to come up first, uh, senior defensive tackle Jonathan King. John John to his teammates had three tackles and a tackle for loss on Saturday against Western Carolina. I'll just open it to questions. 
y'all doing? It's good? Oh. John, after right. the game uh, Saturday, was about as disappointed uh, as I've seen the guys after a game in the last couple of years. Um, how do you rally back up now for these next two games? Um, just knowing that we have another game to play, it's a blessing to be able to step on the field and play. So um, it's always about your response to an outcome and learning how to just deal with it properly. You know, like Coach said, it's a rivalry week. So I always want to win the next game. The next game is the biggest game just because it's the next game. So just focusing up, I'm ready to play Furman. Coach, for you guys, once that switch kind of flipped from you were winning every game out there in SoCon play, it, it was an expectation. When that kind of goes away and it creeps in that you might could lose if you don't play your best game, how does that change as a player? I won't say the expectation has changed because the expectation is always to win and be the best. Um, our defensive motto is called BDN, being the best defense in the nation. So I won't say the expectation has changed. It's just we have to understand and step back. And it just pushes us to work that much harder. You know, we know what we're capable of. We know where we, where we want to be. So it's just get make sure we're doing everything in our power to get there. When it's Furman, does anything else matter? I mean, motivation this week? Uh, me personally, no, because a football game is a football game. Um, to me, I treat everybody as a rival because you're standing across the line, you're across the field on the opposite sideline, so everybody gets treated the same. John, Coach talked about sitting the seniors out with a winning season. Is that important to you guys? Yeah, always. Um, I think, like Coach says, history that can be made with this Furman game. But like he said, winning season is a winning season. I always want to be have some type of winning season. I know in, his, in Citadel history, it's never been a team to go back to back to back for a winning season. And so it's always um, it's an opportunity to uh, make history. So, yeah. Have you been able to look at Furman film yet? Mm -hmm. What what do you make of their offense and uh, how is it different from the they're Furman good. teams in the last two years? Um, they're a lot more downhill. I'll say that. Um, have a very good be back set. Uh, similar reminds me of us playing us. Um, their guys, I'll say, are a lot more fundamental and just uh, just a lot more run game stuff. All right, last cadet athlete, senior quarterback Dom Allen, now 22-10 and 10 as a starter here at the Citadel, and 116 yards rushing and a touchdown Saturday against Western Carolina. We'll just open it to questions. Dom, like I asked uh, John, that was about as disappointed as I've seen you guys after a game in quite a while. <coughs> How do you rally back up now for these last two games of your career? Yeah, absolutely. That was that was a tough loss last weekend, um, especially for our seniors. You know, that was our senior day, and I thought we put up a hard hard fought battle. Um, we just eventually just came up short, so we were all a little disappointed. Um, but you know, another week, we still got two more big games left, um, and this is a rivalry game for us. Um, it's a big game for us. It's a way another a chance for us to um, still have a good season um, and kind of send the guys, the underclassmen, out. Um, into the off season on a good note as well for the seniors off on a good note as well. So we just got to come back to work um, today, um, practice hard and get back to it. This red zone thing has, you know, bothered you guys all year. What's different when you get down in there uh, uh, as compared to between the 20s? Yeah, it's it's been a season long problem for us. and. I'm not really sure what exactly a specific problem it is. You know, we just haven't been able to really punch the ball in between the tackles like we've wanted to, unfortunately. Um, it's just something we got to get better at, um, you know, and it's been a season long problem for us and it's, it's hurt us a lot between the turnovers down there, the penalties down there. Um, we just can't have them. It's just all little mental mistakes that, that eventually kill us. Has it kind of settled in that, you know, you got two more shots, you get two more times to dress up and motivation aside, that's it. Yep. Well, you know, um, 
it's the last two games for me um, for the rest of the seniors. Um, so you know we, we just got to give it give it our all. I mean these are our last two opportunities to to dress up with the rest of the guys and to play for the Cyril and kind of represent our school. Um, so I mean that's a motivation for me. Um, it should be for all the other guys as well. When you look back at where the program was when you got here to what it is now and the expectations. Just what was that journey like for you and for this football team? You know, for me personally, it's been a, it's been a long journey. Um, as you guys know, I transferred in um, from the Air Force Academy Prep School and then getting here and not really knowing much about civil football and its history. And then as, I've, as my time here, I've come to learn a lot about it. Um, and just looking at what they were before and then what we are now, um, there's been a huge transformation. Um, starting with Coach Houston and then for Coach Thompson to kind of carried it on. Um, I think we've progressed a lot and our expectations are set really high. Um, that's why when we lose tough games like that last weekend, it, it hurts really bad because we expect so much out of, out of our team and out of our players. Um, you know, we have these high goals for us to reach every year. Um, and when you don't meet them, it, it just hurts really bad. It cuts real, cuts real deep, uh, especially for me personally, is because I, I feel like I'm responsible for a lot of things that take place on that field. Um, so it, it really gets me a lot. As a guy who takes responsibility, how much pride can you take in where this program is right now, and even though it isn't a championship? You know, I, I love this team with, with everything I got. I mean, I love the guys on the team. I love the coaching staff, um, all our trainers. I love I love everyone who supports us, our fans, uh, the whole Citadel family. I mean, they've been great to us. They've backed us up 100%. Um, they've sent the knobs down to Greenville last year or two years ago when we played at Freeman. Um, so, I mean, they've been they've had our backs the entire way. And even just walking around campus, you kind of feel it. I've had a lot more people just come up to me and just talk to me about football games as we're compared to my freshman year. You know, I'd look around and you'd see nobody talking about football. You'd see nobody excited about the game. You, so you wouldn't see anybody saying great game last weekend or whatever, but now people are doing that now. So you got cadets really supporting us. Last thing for me, just the, the last time you get to suit up for a SOCON game Saturday, like what's that going to be like in your last Furman game and all that stuff? You know, it's going to be emotional. It's, it's definitely going to be a huge game. It's our last conference game. Um, we just got to go out with a big, um, you know, hopefully we can get everything squared away. Um, we got to, I would love to solve this red zone issue uh, this weekend and be able to put some points on the board and just execute our offense the way that I know we can. Thank you. That'll do it for today. Thanks, everyone, for coming. See you Saturday in Greenville.